Major Gorakur came to Longwood by signal and had a long conference with Capitran. 11th, saw Napoleon in bed at 7 a.m., complained of having been restless all night and an increase of pain in his side and shoulder, had a return of palpitation, which he attributed and probably with reason to his having sat in the sun for some time yesterday. I recommended such remedies as were proper, some of which he put into practice. So I'm again at three. He had been in the hot bath and found much relief from it. His appetite was considerably diminished. Sir Hudson Lowe at Longwood, very busy in measuring the distance at which the Sentinels were posted. A ship arrived from the Cape with stores and some mail from England. Twelve. Saw Napoleon with his legs in a tub of hot water. Told me that he felt an easy and di cattivo umori in bad humor. Sir Hudson Lowe had a long interview with Count Bertrand. The latter endeavored to explain to him the point in dispute. Bees. That being obliged to send all letters to him open to such persons resident on the island as he, the governor, might allow to visit them was considered a useless humiliation. If he wished to forward a letter privately to England or to carry on an improper correspondence with an individual or individuals in the island, he betrayed having the power of inviting a certain number of persons to visit Longwood and to retain them there some hours, as the governor said he would grant would surely embrace that as the proper moment to give them such letters or otherwise to communicate improperly with them rather than hazard the compromising of himself and them by sending a sealed letter containing improper communications through the early officer, which would, which should suspicions arise, might be open and ruin the person to whom it was addressed. Sir Hudson Lowe, however, would not understand this. Count Petran also mentioned to him that the emperor considered a free intercourse with the inhabitants as the only guarantee he had for his life. When Major Gorker was at Count Bertrand's on the 10th, the latter informed him that the governor's proceedings had been so illegal and involved in such mystery and obscurity that some of the officers of the 53rd Regiment, conceiving that there might be criminal intentions in view, had signified to them not to be afraid, for that in the 53rd Regiment there were neither assassins nor executioners to be found, also that Sir George Cockburn had said soon after the arrival of Napoleon, if I put sentinels in such a manner and insist upon such and such measures, this man will shut himself up and never stir out. He will not live six months. I will not be the mains of assassinating anybody. I will arrange matters so that he shall have liberty and at the same time not afford the least chance of escaping from the island, which is all that I can affect or indeed care about. Fourteenth. This morning, on presenting myself according to custom to call upon Napoleon, I was informed that he was asleep and had left word for me to go down to Count Petran. Had a conversation with the latter the purport of which was that the emperor had been given to understand that I was in the habit of writing bulletins of his health daily or more distant periods, and that it was his desire that every bulletin should be shown to him, the emperor, before being sent, that any person acting as his physician must necessarily have a portion of his confidence, and that he would not consent to be styled General Bonaparte in reports made by him as such would appear in Europe, to be acquiescence on his part to the use of such a title, which he would sooner die than consent to, that the words l'empereur must be used, and that I had better make the governor acquainted with it. I observed that with respect to the type of l'empereur, I knew that it would be inadmissible. Saw Napoleon afterwards, who told me that he had always thought I might be required to make out reports of the state of his health, especially when laboring under indisposition, that, however, as it was only a surmise, he did not take any notice of it, but that some days ago, General Montalon and Gorgo were asked how were certain symptoms, palpitations, which they were totally ignorant he had ever been afflicted with, as he, Napoleon, had only made me acquainted with them and had professed their surprise that a reply was made stating that such symptoms were described in the bulletins of health sent to the governor. I informed Napoleon that I had often made out reports of his state of health. He asked to see one. I immediately brought him one of the tenth. Looking over it, he observed the word 
general and said that he would never consent to be so styled by me or by any other person acting as his physician that as such I must possess a certain share of his confidence without which I could not be acquainted with the symptoms that a physician was to the body what a confessor was to the soul and was bound to keep such confessions equally sacred unless permitted to divulge it. For the future, therefore, he insisted I should submit to him all reports which I should make of his health, previous to sending them to the governor, that he did not wish to influence me in their compilation. On the contrary, if I conceived any observations made by him to be incorrect, I was not to insert them, but that I should not render an account of such symptoms as delicacy or other motives might induce him to wish to be kept secret that after this warning, if I were to send any more bulletins without having been previously shown to him, it would be acting the part of a spy and not that of a physician, which he added was what the jailer of St. Helena wanted and had done everything in his power to make me, that my reports were transmitted to the commissioners and by them to their courts, that therefore he could not consent to allow a person in my situation to style him general in reports which might be sent to France where he had been once sovereign or to the courts of Vienna and Petersburg is coming from me it would appear to be an acquiescence on his part to such title which he would rather die than consent to therefore I must give my word of honor not to make any more reports without complying with what he thus required and leaving the original in Bertrand's possession if I did not consent to this arrangement that I must not write any more. If I did, he would never see me again as a physician. I replied that I never should be permitted by the governor to style him L'Empereur and suggested that I might use Napoleon or Napoleon B. That as to showing the reports to him, I must first communicate with the governor, which he consented to, but not to the appellation. In my verbal reports, he said he cared not if I called him General Boha or Tirano Bonaparte communicated the purport of the above to Sir Hudson Lowe at Plantation House. As I had foreseen, he decidedly refused to consent to the use of the title required that he was willing he should be styled Napoleon Bonaparte. As to showing the reports to Napoleon previous to their being sent to him, he said that he saw no objection for the present. However, it was a matter he could not decide upon directly that it required some consideration. He added that it was some deep laid scheme of the commissioners. Informed Napoleon in the evening of the answer made by the governor, he observed that he could not think of allowing himself to be insulted by his physician, that after the proposal he had made to the English government to assume the incognito to which no answer had been given, it was the height of insult to insist upon naming him as they liked, that the more they endeavored to humiliate, the more tenacious would he be of the title? I lost my throne for the point of honor. I would lose my life a hundred times rather than allow myself to be debased by consenting to be denominated as my oppressors, please. After some time, I proposed dropping all titles and using the word personage, which I said I thought might remove all difficulties. He approved of my suggestion, but said that patient Limelad would answer better and satisfy him, provided the bulletins were first shown to him and his consent obtained to send them. It was signified to Count Bertrand this day by Sir Hudson Lowe that Sir George Cockburn used to cause the notes and papers which were sent by the French to town to be shown to him before they were allowed to be transmitted to the persons to whom they were directed. 15th, communicated the proposal of yesterday to Sir Hudson Lowe, who refused his consent, saying that he must be styled the Pauline Bonaparte, or General Bonaparte, in any bulletins or reports made of the state of his health. 16th, had a conversation with Napoleon upon the subject of the refusal of the governor to comply with the suggestion of calling him the patient in the bulletin. He observed that the governor evidently wanted to destroy the confidence which existed between him, Napoleon, and me as his physician. When a man has not confidence in his physician, said he, it is useless to have one. Confidence cannot be commanded. You ought to consider yourself as of no nation. A physician and a priest ought not to belong to any particular nation and be divested of all political opinions. Treat me as if I were an Englishman. Chance gave you to me. 
and that is the reason I had confidence in you. If I had not taken you, you know that I should have had a French physician who would not have made bulletins without my permission. Therefore, I insist that you shall not. Would you, if you attended Lord Bathurst, write bulletins of the state of his complaints to be printed or sent to any other than members of his own family without having first obtained his consent? I insist upon being treated in a similar manner and that you drop all political considerations as to what I am or what I was. And when I consult you, act as you would do to one of your own countrymen who was ill. Seven teeth. Napoleon was lying on his sofa, looking low and melancholy, with a cup of chicken water before him. Marchand told me that he had been very well, unwell in the morning, and that he was obliged to chafe his temples and forehead with eau de cologne. Napoleon would not answer the inquiries, which I made relative to his complaints. The griffin soup arrived this day, bringing the intelligence of the loss of the Julius Super War on the island of Tristan da Cunha on the second, with all the officers except Captain Jones and two midshipmen. Eighteen. Napoleon in his bath still persisted in refusing to consult me on his complaints, told me that I had been remarked to go regularly every Tuesday and Saturday to Plantation House, and that were it not for the confidence he had in me, he would... The moment it had been noticed, have dispensed with my services, as it was evident from the regularity of the periods that I went by order of the governor. The fact, continued he, is that all this is only an artifice to deprive me of medical assistance. Derivari più presto ai for it was all well known that as soon as I found it out, I would not submit to it, or that no man of feeling or honor would do so, but... This man has no morale, no feeling. He has been always accustomed to deserters and galley slaves, and nature never intended him for any higher situation than a keeper of convicts. I shall not gladden his heart with the picture of my malady, in order that he may glut his enmity by calculating how long I may suffer before the last agony. You may tell him that I conceive his object to be to deprive me of all medical aid, and by that to arrive sooner at the end which he proposes. I do not esteem life so much as to allow my physician to be made a spy. Tell him that I said his views are directed to lessen the confidence I had in you, and to make you a spy, or to make me suspect that you are one. In fact, continued Napoleon, had it not been for the confidence which I have in you, from the character Captain Maitland gave of you, and from my own observation, the measures of this governor would long ago have induced me to tell you that I no longer had any occasion for your services.' 